Molly on As the World Turns, Leslie Kay. She knows. She knows how stupid I am that I didn't have the guts to stand up to my father when he made me give you away. She knows that, Abigail. I was a lousy mother. And the Emmy goes to... Leslie Kay as Molly Collins from As the World Turns. This is Leslie Kay's first win and first nomination. She's played the role of Molly Conlon on As the World Turns since 1997. I thought I knew what I might say. Um, I want to thank the cast and crew of As the World Turns because without them I wouldn't be here right now. They are so awesome. I want to thank huh, Felicia Minnie Bear and Lucy Johnson and Mickey Dwyer Dobbin for hiring me, Chris Galman for keeping me. <laughs> I want to thank all the writers, the directors, the producers, Tom Eplin for just being so awesome, <laughs> uh, Christina Sisko for making me care about her so much, my mom, Keith Kaloris for being my heart, my soul, the father of my baby. <laughs> I love you, Jackson. And uh, my dad. Oh, you know. You told me I should act instead of becoming a doctor, and I think it's worked out all right. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> and um, I, I appreciate the fans. I appreciate the people that voted for me. And I appreciate... Ben's very thorough. The best. Hmm? Look, whatever the, uh, the tests show, they show. We can handle it. We? Mm-hmm. We're in this together. Yeah, sorry to keep you waiting. Test back? Uh, most of them. I g <clears throat> gotta look at the CAT scan and a wet reading. I'll review it again later. And? And everything's fine. There's no medical evidence of any abnormalities, no sign of any disease. What about the, what about the MRI? Perfectly normal. And the blood work? Everything's fine. Hey, this is good news. So I don't have a brain injury? No. No tumors or anything? No. Nothing. You are in excellent <laughs> physical health. Great. So there, there's there's no nothing left over from the coma then? Nothing. That's great. That's great. Yes. Great news. Yeah, it means I'm not hallucinating. I did see Vicky's ghost. Uh, well, you know, actually, Molly, there there is another possibility. What kind of possibility? You suffered a, a severe head trauma, and the recovery took several months. The, the after effects, it, it altered your entire life. Are you, are you familiar with the term post-traumatic stress disorder? Oh, I get it. I get it. My brain checks out fine, but my mind's gone quacky. Is that it? Just spell it out, doctor. You think I'm crazy. Molly, I wouldn't be doing my job giving you my absolute best if I didn't investigate every conceivable possibility for these episodes that you've been having. I'd like to recommend that you see one of our staff psychologists. Have her do a workup. So what? I can look at ink blots, blame it on my mother, toss it off to potty training? Wait, what, what do we have to lose, huh? Just my credibility, what little of it I have left. Look, I know this sounds like it's out there. Lynn Michaels is one of the best we have. What I, what I saw was real. What's happening to me is real, Ben. It's not Emily Stort pulling a fast one, and it's not smoke and mirrors, okay? So if you can just put medical science aside for one second and just admit, consider that there's a possibility that I have seen Vicky's ghost. Ben, Ben's just trying to rule out any, any explanation. And round and round we go. Okay. You know Adam? Adam Munson, Abigail's friend? Yes. Why? This kid is really, really into the paranormal, Jake. He's been studying up on these, he's been reading all about these extraordinary episodes. And he, yesterday, he left this, this energy sensing gizmo thing at the apartment and it picked up a reading. It did. And that proves that there's some unexplained energy or presence that was there with us. Talking about some kid. Some kid who can order a piece of electronics on the net. Right, and I'm just a garden variety lunatic. No, no, huh? honey, let's just let's just give this Dr. Michaels a try. That's as much us. 
as a more of this team spirit stuff. Are you going to be there at the shrink's office? No. It's going to be me alone on that woman's couch. I got news for both of you, okay? When and if I think I'll be the first in line at that doctor's office, but until then, I'm not going, okay? There's nothing wrong with me. Vicky visited me at the Lakeview, Jake. Why can't you just believe me? I want to. Or you won't. Oh, I gotta get out of here. I can't do this anymore, Jake. I have to go. Molly. Hey, Vicky. Vicky, you here? You know. People are starting to think that I'm ready for the padded cell. Maybe even Jake. Is that what you want? Huh? Because if that's your plan, it's working, Vicky. Is that it? Is that what you want? Come on, Vicky, is it? So in case you were wondering, I wear a size two straight jacket. Yeah, well, Lisa was all out of those of fashions. So where are your friends? You know, the little men Mom, in the white suits? Don't. Don't what? Don't act crazy? Don't see ghosts? Or just don't tell you about it when I do? No, I always... I always want you to talk to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as long as there's a clear-cut explanation for everything. Like Emily, like the coma, like falling down a flight of stairs. No, well, you know something I am... Always a little bit more comfortable in the land of the living. Tell me the truth. Today was all a setup, wasn't it? No. No. You knew that my brain was actually fine. You just wanted Ben Harris to place a rubber stamp on my chart about that and it... tell me a good shrink. Crazy. It's ridiculous. I meant to say ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. You know how long I slept last night? Well, I, I did one second. I didn't sleep last night because I was scared second. to death. And you know why I was scared? Do you know what it's like, like trying to... to keep Abigail from finding out that I think that I have a brain? I'd suit? like to be able to get a word in here edgewise. Fine, talk. Who's talking? Something I, I don't know. I don't know if I believe in spirits or or ghosts. You mean outside my brain? I mean anywhere because I never put much thought into it. Well, do you think I did? Do you think it's possible that I could get you in reception mode here? Sorry. You know, I haven't seen or heard any, any of the things that, that you've seen or heard. So I'm just trying to take a bunch of facts and make some out of this. Number one, you took, a, you took a bad fall down some stairs. Number two, you went into a coma. Number three, when you came out of the coma, you had a whole bunch of setbacks. And you had Emily running around playing mind Emily games with you. Emily said she didn't make those You know something? Calls. Emily says a lot of things, Molly. Isn't it, isn't, it, isn't it possible, maybe not probable, but isn't it, isn't it possible that you had some kind of psychological reaction? Reaction wouldn't be out of the question here. It's not like you're coming, coming off the spool or anything. So what is the problem? Did my brain just need a tune-up or something? <sighs> it's a shame that Ben didn't run some kind of test to check the hardness of your head. Me? What about you? I just say Vicky's name, and you, you get this weird look in your eye. You do this weird thing, you back off, you pull away from me, Jake. You know, I think, I think the person who's having a hard time facing up to what's happening to me is you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Like... It's okay, it's not like it's any new information, I just think... I hate the thought of Vicky's ghost wandering around, you know, if I have one wish left, it said wherever she is, she's resting in peace. I want that too, Jake. All right, well, you know something? I'm gonna believe what you say is happening is happening. And that's not true, is it? Maybe not yet. There's something that, um, that I've been wanting to tell you but I, maybe I should just say it. Say what? I had another dream, Jake. It's about Vicky. Yeah, 
No. Yeah, I mean, it started out with her, and then she was me, and I was her, and... Why don't you just back up to a bit, okay? I was alone, and I was up in the sky, and it was peaceful, and it was beautiful, and it was perfect. And, th and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I heard her call my name. You heard, you heard Vicky. She, Molly, where are you? Where are you? And um, then all of a sudden everything just went nuts and I started falling and I started falling faster and faster and faster and then I heard the, the ship's horn and then I, then I heard the, the ocean and, and then I just started screaming out for help. I was screaming and, and then Vicky, she, she just kept saying my name over and over and where, where are you, where are you? And then everything just went dark. Just and then I went down into the water and, and I was freezing cold and I was in the water and then it came up over me and then my lungs filled up and I just swear it was like... Just stop it, Molly, all right, stop! Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <sighs> you know, some you think I don't think about the seconds be before she died. I mean, I think about it almost every hour of, of, of my waking day. I think about what, what... Vicky must have thought about. I bet she thought about the kids. She thought about Stephen and Kirkland and trying to imagine them. Imagine what they'd be like as grown men. And I bet she thought about our babies. Our babies that weren't born that she would never be able to hold or would never hear the sound her mouth makes when she said her own name. I shouldn't have said anything. No, that's right. If you can't share those, those type of things in your life, what have you got, right? Jake, I just wanted so badly, so badly for you to believe me, and I guess I just never stopped to think what I was doing to you. I'll be fine. I just don't want you, every time we're together, looking for the nearest exit door, okay? I'm just, I'm really afraid of what this is doing to us. I think you're worried what it means if this isn't Vicky's ghost. And I think I'm worried what it means if it is. You know what? I can handle the ghosts. I can handle the nightmares. I can handle all that. I can handle even if you think that I'm one ace short of a full deck. I can... But what I can't handle, what I can't handle is losing you. I can't. That, that scares me more than anything. When I said that about the shrink, I wasn't trying to say you were nuts. I just thought you should be able to talk to somebody about this. Somebody who isn't you. Yeah, maybe. I shouldn't have put you through what I did with Ben. That was wrong. I'm sorry. It's okay. I just, I guess, I guess a little pushy when I'm in love with someone. What? What did you just say? When I'm in love with someone. I love you, Molly. See, you don't just have to say that. No, you know what I mean? I, I, it rips me apart when I think about Vicky, but there's this whole other side that... Jake, I mean, it. you really don't just have to say it, because I can... No, I think I do have to say it. You know, before I met Vicky, there's... I could have written a novel. 101 ways to ruin... A... She showed me the ropes. I mean, she showed me how to let my guard down to say I'm sorry and really mean it because I really, really, really hate being wrong. She also showed me that... that even though that you don't know... A... She showed me that even though... You don't have a clue what someone else is going through. You gotta support him and listen to him. You just can't cut and run. She sounds like a remarkable woman, Jake. Oh. 
forget everything but time. <laughs> Do you know how stupid it is to wear a watch as if it measures anything that really counts? The only thing that matters is the moments that happen. The little hand goes around and around that count. That's the only thing that counts. And if you're blessed, if you're blessed to have a second chance at love, you got to go for it because you never had Never know how much. Because nobody has forever. Remind me next time I see Vicky to thank her. I'll always miss Vicky, but I won't miss being in love. Because I found it again. I found it in the way that your hair goes flying around your head when you, when you wake up in the morning. I love it. I found it. In the way that you you kick the covers off in the middle of a freezing night, I found it in the way that you are with Abigail. I love love the way that you are with Abigail. Do you really? Don't don't interrupt me. I'm on a roll. I love the fact that every time I leave, I cannot wait until the second that I see you again. And you're not. Don't get me started on you. I, I just I love you. I love you, Molly Conlon. Do you know how long I've waited to hear you say those words? I never thought that I would say them again, but but it's true. No, no vision or bad dreams or wonderful memories of Vicky are going to get in the way of that. Sometimes you like to hear the words. All right, you know, I've said those three little words a lot of times. <laughs> I, I know. Yeah. But I now know that I never knew what the hell I was saying. I had no clue what those three little words meant. Not till right now. Not till right here. I love you. I love you. <laughs> I love you, Jake McKinnon, with all my heart.
to your daughter. She's not my daughter, isn't she? Abigail? Abigail, honey, is that you? Mommy! I'm right here. I'm right here, honey! Mommy! I'm right here. Don't be afraid. I'm right here. Where, where are you? Talk to me. Talk to me so that I can find you. Abigail? Yes. Oh, well, you're gonna be fine. I'm right here. You'll be fine. I'm right here with you. And all the way through it, you kept calling for me, and I couldn't find you. I kept searching and searching for you, but I couldn't find you. And then you were there. But you were a little girl. And you were so beautiful. But you were cold. And you were afraid. And you were holding onto that stuffed animal like you were never going to let go. It was a horse. He had a black mane. He was light brown. I called him Lucky. How did you know that, Abigail? Because. Wait. No, this can't be happening. This is real, isn't it? I don't understand this. How could you have seen that? How could you have known that? Tell me. I was uh, around four, I think. And we were on vacation at the beach. We stayed in this, um, this little cottage. There was a hurricane that night. Honey, were you hurt? No. No, but I was so alone. I never remember talking about this to anyone. Where were the Williams? Sleep, I think. It was night, and there was lots of thunder and lightning and the wind. The wind sounded like screaming. I kept calling out for my mommy, but she wasn't there. Diana found you eventually, didn't I, she? I'm sure. I'm sure she did. I... I just never remember anything else. I mean, Dad and Mom talk about that vacation in the hurricane all the time, but I never remembered anything until now. I was your mother, and I wasn't there for you. Molly, it was just a dream. No, but... it's true. I wasn't there for you. That is the truth. That's the truth that Vicky's been trying to make me see. Is that it, Vicky? Is that what you're trying to show me, what a screw-up I am? Because you got through loud and clear. That can't be it, Molly, because that isn't true. No, she knows. She knows how stupid I am that I didn't have the guts to stand up to my father when he made me give you away. She knows that, Abigail. I was a lousy mother. Vicki McKinnon has come back from the grave to make sure that I never forget that. Well, you know what, Vicki? I got the message, so just back off! Molly, you want to hear my interpretation of the dream? Oh, honey, you don't have to try to make me feel better. I'm going to say it anyway. Listen, you were asleep in a warm, comfortable bed. And you heard a little girl crying for help. And although it was so terrifying, you got up and went through that spooky door and Jake tried to hold you back and the, the, everything. And you searched for her and you found her. Just like you found me. <laughs> oh, honey. 
That was the luckiest day of my life. That was mine, too. Okay. Right now, I'm over it. I am going to let everything I've done wrong, every mistake in my life, I'm just going to let it go. I have to. Because you know what's important? Me and you. I got my baby girl. And I swear to you, I'm not going to mess that up, obsessing over everything in my life that I ever did wrong, no matter what Vicki McKinnon thinks. No, I don't think Vicki meant the dream in a bad way, Molly. I don't care. Even if she did, she's preaching to the converted, okay? I know that she was the perfect mother, the perfect wife. How can I compete with that? You don't have to. so much for early to bed, early to rise. I say that's just a recipe for insomnia anyway. So, anybody for some more milk? You don't have to compete with anybody about anything. I'm sorry we woke you up. I guess you want to know what it's all about. You had another dream. It was very scary. Vicky was telling me to look inside myself for the truth, and Abigail was there, but she was a four-year-old, and she, I couldn't find her. It was thundering. You don't have to compete with anyone about being a mother. Does she, Abigail? Absolutely not. But Vicki... Want something and we don't know what it is. Well, I do. I do. She thinks I'm a bust in the motherhood department. Next, she'll be giving me dreams about what a lousy girlfriend I am. Vicki has this weird way of showing people things. Not everyone gets it. I mean, I've been speaking a language for years, and sometimes I need a translator. What if she doesn't want me to be with you, Jake? I think I'm just going to leave you two alone. No. No, honey, no, don't. I'm just in here feeling sorry for myself. Stay. I have a confession to make. I haven't always been a nice guy. As a matter of fact, I used to be kind of a kind of a bad guy. Then I married Vicky. And instantly I had a family and and I and I liked it, whether Deserved it or not, I had this, uh, this anchor, this, this home. And then I lost, I lost Vicky. And that, that woman knew me better than anyone, anyone ever has. And wherever she is, I know that when she sees me with the two of you, she knows that I'm, that I'm, that I'm getting some of that, that back. Now, I don't know what she wants. I don't, but, uh. One thing I do know is that she doesn't want to take you away from me. Well, I guess I'm just going to have to suck it up and stick it out with you then. Mm. Mm. How about you, kid? A little spooked? More than a little. Yeah, all right. Well, me too. Listen. We have been drafted. We are all in this together. So you think that's what that dream means? That Vicky wants Abigail to help us too? I don't know. We'll find out together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>